Today's class is titled, What is Mashiach Doing at the Gates of Rome? Mm -hmm. Wow. <laughs> What's he doing there? So first, we would like to thank uh, the organizer, Michal Shilak, for organizing in Chaya for calling. This is a great mitzvah that you get other people to learn. And may Hashem bless both of you to raise up your children and have health and happiness and a lot of parnasa and so on and so forth. Amen. Amen. Now, last week in the uh, Torah reading, God tells Moses to be the leader for the Jewish people to take them out from Egypt. Does Moshe accept the position at first? No. And the answer is no. He puts up a big, fight. big argument. <laughs> and this argument take, is take, takes a week to settle. He doesn't want this position. He comes up with all excuses. They won't believe me. They're not, uh, who am I? I'm just a nobody. What will I tell them? What's God's name? What, what am I going to say? He uses all arguments. One of his arguments is... God, why don't you send him with the one you will send him? If you see the first quote on your page, but he said, I beseech you, O Lord, send now your message with whom you would send. That's what he says. Send with whom you will send. What does that mean? So our sages say that that verse means send him, send your message with Mashiach because I ain't taking them into Israel anyway. I'm not going to get there. I'm not going to do the full job. But he, he so send him with Mashiach. He didn't know that at that point. Well, he, he, subconsciously he knew it, and that's what he was saying. Yes. That he knew exactly the, the ins and outs, what's going to happen, but that's what he really said. He said, I'm not going to do the whole job, so please <laughs> take him instead. Okay. To which God says, no, I want you to do the job. However, there is a correlation between Moshe and Mashiach. There is a connection there. As a matter of fact, the Talmud says, Moshe is the first redeemer and Moshe is the second redeemer. That means Moshe redeemed the Jews and Moshe will redeem the Jews with Mashiach. So he's actually going to do the job. The question though is, does that mean that Moshe is literally going to be the Mashiach? Moshe Rabbeinu is the Mashiach? That can't be. Why can't that be? It doesn't come from David. David. Very good. It doesn't work. It doesn't come from the house of David. David. Moses, Moshe Rabbeinu comes from the house of Levi. Moshiach comes from the house of David, which is which tribe? That's not, that's tribe of Yehuda. So Moshe comes from Yehuda, and Moshiach, sorry, Moshiach comes from Yehuda, Moshe comes from Levi. It cannot be one and the same. But what this does mean is that Moshe gives the power. Moshe is the force that leads to Moshiach. You've got to have Moshe to give the force and the power to bring about to Mashiach. So Moshe is the first redeemer, and he like brings about the final redemption with Mashiach. How so? Well, one of the explanations is, if you remember from your class, that said the criteria of Mashiach, the first criteria of Mashiach is, he has to be a well-versed in Torah. Not only well-versed, but he has to be astidious, uh, continuously studying Torah. Which Torah? It's called Torah's Moshe. Moshe brought us the Torah. Mashiach must have the Torah as the first, that's his first criteria of being the Redeemer. He has to have Torah. So Mashiach and Moshe are related. Someone asked me last week if the names are related. Yeah. And... Uh, not really, because the name, not that I know of at least, the name Moshe comes from uh, drawing out of the water. 
and Mashiach <coughs> comes from the word anointed. It's two different meanings. However, those who are familiar with gematria, and that's numerical equivalent of different words in the Torah, there is a word in the Torah called, um, in, in, we just had it, in Vayechi, where he says, Ad ki yavo shilo, yavo shilo, till Shiloh will come. Who's Shiloh? Mashiach. Yavo shilo, um, shilo, yavo shilo has the same numerical equivalent as Mashiach. Shiloh itself has the same equivalent as Moshe. So there is a relationship there, Moshe and Mashiach. But that's not even the main discussion that I want to share tonight. There's something else very interesting. In, this, in last week's parasha, <coughs> this week's, we learned about Moshe Rabbeinu. Moshe Rabbeinu, where does he grow up? Where is Moses? In Egypt. In Egypt. We're in Egypt in the house of Pharaoh, in Pharaoh's palace. So here you got a leader that is going to um, lead the Jewish people out from Egypt, but yet he finds himself his early years in Egypt, in the house of the ruler Pharaoh. To the extent that it says that Moshe Rabbeinu he was, when he was a little child, the daughter of Pharaoh loved him so much, and Pharaoh, they used to hug him and they wouldn't let him go out. They would keep him in the palace the whole time, and as Pharaoh was holding him, when he was a little boy, he took Pharaoh's crown off of his head and put it on his own. Is that anointed, anointed him? <laughs> well, that was a definitely invocation that one day he's going to be taking the rulership of Pharaoh and he's going to throw down Pharaoh and, as a matter of fact, that's where he got his speech impediment. What happened was, Pharaoh thought it might be just uh, a joke, you know, nothing. But he was told that, no, this is serious. Maybe this is a sign that this boy is, gonna, is going to throw you off. So he put a test before Moses. And he put, on one plate, he put hot, shiny coals. Hot coals. On the other, he put black and white. No, in other words, he put... Uh, like a diamond. Like you know what I would go for. <laughs> There's no question. <laughs> the other, first he put hot coals, and the other one he put gold and uh, diamonds. diamonds. And he said like this, if Moses is going to pick the gold, that means he's after my, my rulership, he's after my crown. If he goes after the shining coals, that's a sign. He just likes things that are shining. Coals can be very shiny, very bright. So as the story goes, Moshe put his hand towards the gold, the diamonds, but an angel came and pushed his hand, and he touched the coals. At that point, he, he took either he took it and put it on his lip, or he took his hand and put it by his tongue because he just got burnt, and that made him... I have a speech impediment till the end of his life. That's where he became uh, a hard of speaking. You ever heard that before? No. Yeah. I, yeah, that's I, I that's a old a midrash. Yeah. So Moshe grows up in the king of Pharaoh, the king of Egypt. So what's happening is the leader of Egypt is being grow is growing up in Egypt. The leader of the Jewish people who is being oppressed by Egypt is actually growing up in Egypt, and that's. Pretty fascinating that, 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 that that's the scenario.